legacy and what does that mean in terms of what you've seen here today, the kind of cross-generational presence, particularly to me, the people will, who will be around after I'm long gone, after a lot of those of us who are aging aren't around, and yet the legacy that we kind of protect is one that can be embraced and is being embraced and can be the source of a level of inspiration to keep the struggle going, which is very challenging. I can't tell you how many times we have conversations at the archives about how challenging times like this are, and yet we all feel like we have to continue to move and advance and resist. And, you know, that's really what it's about. The fact that we've come this far in 20 years means that we have another 20 years ahead of us. Whether or not some of us are part of that and are around for it or not, in fact, you all deserve access to that history of struggle. And plenty of people aren't with us any longer whose voices and whose contributions we have access to because really the history of struggle is a, it's a collective one. And, you know, to the extent that we can preserve that because the state wants to wipe it out. That's the story that they don't want told, remembered, or moving forward. And so really this is a joint effort, right? It's not about any one of us, or even a small collective of us, which it is. And yet, you know, if we're going to be able to look back in another 20 years, which we should, and we're still moving forward, which we're totally capable of doing, there's no reason to give it up. And there's a reason to hang on to it. And so, you know, it's amazing to me. You know, we have this, we're still doing work with the Williams family after having done work with Mabel Williams for many years. I mean, to me, that's one of those priceless experiences in my life, which, you know, I'll savor that for a long time. That's true of, you know, people have been mentioned who've gotten out of prison recently after decades and decades. And we've still got work to do to get the rest of them out. Not, not, just, not just the names that are recognizable. I mean, our people, our communities are locked up. Men, women, trans, it doesn't matter. The, our prisons are full of people who deserve to be alongside us out here struggling for a better life. And they will, given the opportunity. So, you know, it's, to me, it's sort of an obvious, compelling thing until we've accomplished it. And your support has made it possible. I mean, every 10 bucks, you know, Ford Foundation, we're not getting close to it. <laughs> we know why, you know. We know why, because those people, they can wave money around, but it's not for liberatory politics. It's not about really transforming who has power in this world. And, you know, it's an international struggle. There's a reason why we have to support Palestine. There's a reason why we have to support Venezuela. There's a reason we have to support Cuba. You know, look around us where people are really putting their lives on the line and trying to move this forward. If, 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 if we can't do as much, then I think we have to look at why. And, you know, that's, that's my thing. I'm glad that you all have made it possible to come this far and to move this forward and we're healthy. And we have a lot of young people working with us and that's our future, really. It is our future. And if it weren't for that, this stuff would be sitting in
in some warehouse at best. So thank you for making it what it is, and I have faith that you're going to move it for another 20 years forward, so thank you for being here. <laughs>